it's day two, and if either of them can establish psychological supremacy in the fish course, it could affect the outcome of the whole week. All right, Matt, as usual, you've got a bigger box than I have. I know, what's going on here? I seem to be making hard work for myself. What have you got today? What are you doing for me today? Smoked pike with baby beetroot salad from the Isle of Arran with horseradish cream. This looks like a designer dish to me. It might go down very well in the gherkin, but pike is bland if it's not really fresh. And Tom's had some bad news. Uh, you know, obviously asked for a lovely fresh pike, you know, etc. Arrived. Can I see the pike, please? What was it? Even though it's now defrosted, it's inevitably lost the fresh quality Tom's looking for. So, anyway, I'm going to do the best that I can with it today. And um, I've arranged some fresh pike coming, especially for the judges. Should be getting caught in about half an hour. Yeah. <laughs> what about yourself? What you got? Well, I've got some nice uh, Loch Linney prawns, Scottish prawns. Uh, Loch Linney. So these ones have still got a bit of life in them. Fantastic. So I'm going to use those. He's going to serve them with a minted pea puree and carrot foam. The key question is, does treating the vegetables that way make this a modern dish? It's a question I don't like being asked because I don't really know the answer to it. And what is British cooking? Because I know, my, I, I know myself that I'm heavily influenced by French techniques. Certainly. Aren't we all, though? So yeah. Is it, you know... I do feel that it's very important to, to use your seasonality, to use the local produce that we have, you know? No, I think it probably is. I think that is you know, a good idea, a good interpretation of it. Is that modern? You know, there's more and more we're going back to our roots of, you know, just using what's in season. Well, they're bound to go on debating that. But there's nothing old-fashioned about one of Matt's ingredients. And Tom's curious. What's this in the tub here? It's a soya-based thing. Right, what you okay. use for health, it breaks down fats, but also uh, foams up liquids. All right. So you put that into Does the that liquid no, it doesn't add flavour, it just gives you the volume and gives you the, um, you can foam it up. So I'm going to use it for my carrot just when I'm going to do the carrot foam to garnish it. Oh, really? so I've never seen that. It's quite a good thing. Does he look convinced? I don't think so. Some shallots to put through my pea puree and... Uh-huh. Simple. Half the box well, you've got. Yeah, so I guess I better get a move on there, yeah. In direct contrast to Matt, Tom seems to thrive on complexity and keeping busy. He's very much the city boy. Tom opened his waterside restaurant just two years ago. It's in the fashionable Leith Docks area of Edinburgh, within a few miles of where he was born. Make sure it's nicely seasoned, all that salad there. Sure. Tom weaves his complicated, creative magic in a much smaller kitchen than the one where he began his early training, at the upmarket Glen Eagles Hotel in Perthshire, under head chef Alan Hill, who's now a director there. Do you remember this area in here? Wow. This has changed a bit since I was here. They may have moved everything around, but the memories still come flooding back. Yeah. This was the soup section, the potage. Yeah. And another chef de party, I used to have to come in early and steal all the pans from the other sections and hide them underneath so that the chef de party... I, mean, I, never, I never bought enough pans for no, people to work with. I remember with. that. Oh, my God. <laughs> that's, a, that's a typical of a kitchen chef, isn't that's it? That's it, yeah. A year later, Tom moved down to London and a job in a three Michelin starred restaurant, the Tante Claire, under the outstanding chef Pierre Kaufman. I went there when I was 18 years old. I was so out of my depth, I can't, I can't tell you. I think I must have been sacked about 35 times in the first year, but every time I kept coming back, kept coming back. And now looking back on it, I know that it was all about the process of him pushing me, trying to get the.